presentation. Um, so thank you for the invitation. I'm Elisa. I come originally from Argentina, so South America. Um, and I came here to Germany to do a master. Actually, I have like a not very straight path on my career. So I started the PhD. I realized that the topic was not for me. And then I started working more on environmental sciences. First, I was working on neurosciences, so something really different. And then in Argentina, I, start work, I started working more on environmental sciences and doing courses. Um, and finally, the, the, the final like um, yeah, turn on, on the career was getting a scholarship to do a master in environmental sciences in modeling and GIS in Germany. And after I finished the, the, the master, I started working on the Forest Research Institute in Baden-Württemberg, where I live. That's the, like the state in Germany where I live. And yeah, we were talking about informally before. I, I do mostly research on species distribution and climate change on, on forests in South Germany. Um, the institute where I work is like a, the, 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 it's, it has a combination of applied um, work and applied research, and I'm more more on the applied research, but I usually work with the foresters um, together. Um, so that's like a short presentation about me. Um, and the idea today is to um, go together. Uh, in the first steps using Git and GitHub from our uh, studio. So actually you can also use Git di directly from the console, but since we are here in our ladies and we probably use, all, we all probably use a lot of R, I find that our studio is a good way to manage Git and GitHub and connect to GitHub. So I will share my screen. Um, Ah, before that, um, so the, I, the, the presentation is um, available online, so you can download it. I will post it on the chat again. Um, there you can download the presentation I will be showing. And yeah, Lily already told you, but if you have questions, you can either write it on the chat and I have no problem if, if you just interrupt, because I think the idea is that we can understand what, what we are talking about. And so there's no problem if you interrupt. On, on, on the other, yeah. Uh, on the contrary, I'm happy uh, if I have questions also. So, um, I will share my screen. So, yeah, I hope you can see the presentation there. Yes, very good. Maybe I can do it. Yeah, there I can do it. Um, yeah, um, full screen. So, when I thought about this talk, um, I, I used two talks that are in Spanish about Git and GitHub as a resource. Uh, one is from Janina Bellini, she's also on on Our Ladies Global, and the other is from Our Ladies Buenos Aires, where I come from. And one, I, one of the ideas I took from them is, is to think, okay, who is the person I'm talking to? So, um, so that you all can also have an idea, okay, where, where am I? Um, so I just put, I just chose a name, that's Lucy. <laughs> And um, so this person already knows how to use R and uses R to analyze data. Uh, she knows how to use uh, R projects. Um, she has some idea about R markdown and uses um, it also to organize work and to comment on, on her work. Um, and then like she has tried some ways of sharing her work. Um, I don't know, maybe Google um, Google Documents or or uh, Dropbox, and then she might have finished with some things like version one, version one point one, version one L final, version two final. Um, but she's trying to improve that. Um, she also heard about Git and has has 
yeah, and she thought that that might help, um, but it's, yeah, she's not sure where to start learning in, or she has tried and and maybe she had succeeded at some point and have some some has some doubts about that. Um, yeah, and wants to understand how Git and Git has GitHub works uh, together. And then I also added some some um, one more point at the end that is also how to publish on on GitHub using. Git and using also from R Studio um, and also yeah on GitHub. Um, so to to start with, uh, what is Git? And Git is just a version control software. There are other version control softwares, and what this allows us to that to do is to save not only the final version of our file or our work or our code, but also to save like screenshots of previous versions. So when you when you are using it and you are using it properly, you will not only have your last version, but you will also um, have access to previous version of your work. And the good thing about that is that it's easy to collaborate because then if someone changes something or deletes something, um, there is always a previous version of your document or of your code um, that you can access to. So the good thing is that even about using it is that at some point you lose this uh, fear of losing everything because of collaborating. Um, so as I said, yeah, you can access the history of, of, of how your actual document has been changing. Um, you can also track who did which which change. Um, so you can, if you don't understand something, you can say, okay, I know who did that, this change. I can ask this person, okay, what, what were you trying to do? Or you can also uh, see, okay, are we working on the same part or, or are we working on different parts of, of our work? Um, what it also allows is to compare between different versions. So maybe you have an older version and the new one and something is not working on your new version and everything broke and you want to see, okay, where is the problem here? So Git allows you to um, compare the two versions and to see what was del 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 deleted, what was added, and then you can try to easier find where the problem would be. Um, and also you can recover files that were deleted. So you don't have to be scared about winning the work that someone else did. Um, so the, the first thing that we have to do if we want to use Git on, on R is to first down, download Git and then to configure Git on R Studio. So um, in order to do that, um, you just go to tools on Git on, on R, so I can show where this is. You just go to tools and then um, global options and then like Git or SVN. Actually, SVN is another um, version control software, but we, I think Git is nowadays mostly used and um, the more popular, the most popular one. So actually, you go here and then usually this might appear automatically, but then you go here and you find where the um, where your git.exe is. Um, yeah. And, and that's the most important thing to have git associated with, with R. So actually, you can also, as I show here, um, yeah. So this is actually the most important part. Uh, Uh, so, then how do we start using it? Um, so I think this is an, I'm showing an older version of the presentation, so I will stop sharing the computer. Sorry for that. Um, Ah, maybe I also shared the old version um, on on the with you, so it's not the last version. 
So I will probably share it uh, after after the meetup. Yeah, but that's now, fine. We can uh, send it around uh, later. Yeah, now I have the newest version, so I will share my computer again, um, my, my screen again. Yeah. Yep. So actually, um, yeah, that, that's what, where we were. We also showed about that. And yeah, this is okay what we are doing today. The idea is first to see how, how to work locally with Git, so how to use Git to track changes on our own computer, then how to go, how to work remotely with Git, and that means also incorporating GitHub on our work, um, how to work on a team using Git and GitHub. And I will just show I think what I think is the easiest or yeah, more more most straightforward possibility. There are other more complicated ones, but I will show the one I think is the one most straightforward and easiest to use. And then, um, yeah, I will also try to show you how to use Martin files on GitHub. So how does it work to use Git locally? So actually, you have different parts. You have the RStudio IDE, where we were going to work. Then you have the working directory. And then there is one command that we will use to start tracking the changes on our files. So actually, to start tracking the changes on the different files when we started git on 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 one on one project directory is to add that, add those files and the command is git add and then when we want to take a screenshot of that file of that file we, that we are already um, tracking we have to use another command that is git commit and then we will save that screenshot on our local git repository so actually, the idea of working locally is actually um, adding all the files, all the new files we want to track. The ones we don't we don't add will not be um, taken into account by Git. They will be just the normal files. And then each time we want to take a screenshot of our file, we will use this other command at um, yeah Git commit. And um, so these are the two um, the two commands we will use. So git add that will add the file to the station area. The station area is actually where we are go with the files in on the station area are the files that are going to be tracked. Um, and, and when the files are on that area, they, they are uh, git start saving the versions. And then if we were using the console, we will have to use a git add and the file path or git add all, and then we will just add all the files to our station area. And then git commit, which actually saves changes into the local repository um, and saves a, a version of the file. Uh, yeah, and one good practice is like maybe to do each time we do a change, do a git commit. So we just have one description per change screenshot per change we did, like one, one version per change we did. If we are working four days and then we commit all the changes together and then something is not working, we actually don't know where our problem was. So one good practice is to, um, yeah, to do a commit each time you think you have just finished one part of your work. And then another, Mm, good practice is to write like meaningful commit messages. Messages when you uh, do git commit, you have the possibility of write a message. Okay, what what did it what did it change in this new version I'm adding to my his my history of that file, um, and then a, a good mini, a meaningful commit message will help you to remember what you were doing and also to your people working on your team to know. Okay, uh, what did she or he do? Um, so, yeah. So let's try now um, to do it on R. I will just show you how to do that on R. So for example, now I will just, um, so 
propose the project. And then all the steps I'm, I'm doing now are also on the presentation on the new version. So let's say, first I have to create a project. So I will just create a new project um, on my computer. Um, and I will just do a whole new project on a new repository. And I will just save it on, save it on our ladies and I will say, uh, it, um, meet up. Um, and here, actually, you can create a Git repository. So when you start your, your new um, project, you can already create a Git repository when starting a project. But if you didn't, I will create it without that. If you didn't, of, if you have projects that are already started, but you want to um, start using version control, you can also go to tools, um, and that's on project options. And here you also have the possibility to start tracking the changes on repositories that you're on, on projects that you already started. And then we say, yes, we want to restart our And that's one possibility to start like um, tracking changes on your own computer. The, the, the thing here is that you will be tracking all your changes on, on your yeah on your local uh, machine. Um, so if I, um, when I start a repository, there are two things that appear. So here appears the, the possibility of version control, and also here like appears like a new tab where I have the possibility to commit. And I also have the possibility, for example, to say, OK, here I will, for example, add this file. I, will, I can, for, um, for example, create a new file um, that I want to start tracking. And let's say, So I will save this file. I will just say uh, test our file. And now it appears also here. And now if I do this, I already uh, run this command git add so that it will start tracking changes on the file. And let's say I want to start saving my files from here. So I can just click here on commit and this will run the git commit. Hmm. And then I have to make a commit message. That is my first, first, um, my first commit with no content. Um, and then I can just commit the file. I just close. And then I can just make, for example, some new change. Uh, let's say um, I just create some data that I will then um, use to plot, make a histogram. Yes, I will see if this run, this should run. Yeah, I have a histogram here and I want to save this new uh, version of my of my file so i first save look at this window when i just save this new version the file again appears here and that means that the file was modified so i can click on the file and then if i commit i will only commit the changes that are on this file and that's good because then you can just make commits changing one file at a time even when you have have changes have changed many files when working uh, and then I can say add um, historian. And here you can say, okay, what, what changed? Um, so I have then, a question, if I may. Yeah. I was just wondering, so all these steps that you have done now, by now, do they all already automatically appear on your, um, on your GitHub account or somewhere? No, so far we are only working um, locally. locally. Okay. 
that will, that yeah i mean um these same things so whenever you want to work remotely you need to do first change locally and then connect it to github so that's why i thought okay it's better to start showing how it works locally and then how the same thing we do locally is connected to github but so far everything is saved on a git file so on this file um so everything is saved actually uh yeah no. uh, is everything is saved on on our on our uh yeah on 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 our computer yeah and it's yeah uh, and it's actually saved here uh, on our history. So, for example, when I go here to history, I shall see the first commit I did with no content, the one where I only had the title, and I see my second commit where I added my histogram data. Um, and here is where I can, each time I do a commit, I will see a new, a new line here. Yeah. And every and these things are all happening um, on my computer. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to the presentation. So that was like the first demo of how we work locally using Git on our studio. And I, I mean, I still feel it is like, um, yeah. A good practice to do it even when you are working alone. It's it's a good way to not to, not to have the, the the fear of losing something or some suddenly something breaks and you don't know how it fix how to fix it and you want to go back. So it's better than doing control set. So this is actually what I showed you now, and now we come to more working re uh, remotely. So when you are remotely remotely, you also have your local repository, and your your computer. This works exactly the same. But now we add like two new commands, which are pull and push. And actually, what we have outside our computer is a remote repository, which could be actually on any server, but we use some web interface, with, which is GitHub. There are others like GitLab that is also used. And then we have some also collaborators. So we have the computer from other teams. And this computer, the, the people working on his or her computer, um, he or her, they will be just doing the same as we do here. And every time they think, okay, I have, um, I, you can have one commit or three commits or five commits, but you have like something that you already think it's finished and you want to share it, you will just use a new, um, a new command that is um, cool. Yeah. Um, but it's actually pushed. This is, this is right, this is wrong, sorry. So it's actually to push. And then when you want to retrieve all the changes that maybe your, your computer, uh, your team member did, you will pull the, the, the changes to your local repository. But the good thing is that each member can work locally and then you will all by these commands um, be changing a remote repository, um, which you will actually be able to see using a web interface. And then, so um, actually git pull is this um, command that updates your local repository from the remote repository. So it's actually like pulling the information from, from the web. Um, and then push is the, is, the, is the command that will be sending the changes you did from your local repository to the cloud or to GitHub uh, in this case. Um, and yeah, what can appear in these cases is, for example, is some. So the good thing is that when you do push or pull, maybe you change something on on file A, and your um, team member also ch changed something on on file A. But as long as it's not the same line, um, Git and GitHub will be able to merge those changes. So there will be no conflict if you are both working on the same on the same file, and that's good. It's easier. It's not that you have to be talking to your um, team member. Are you working on this file or are you working on this other file? You can both work on this file as long as you are not changing exactly the same lines. Git uh, will be able to merge all the changes. Um, 
but also a good thing to avoid warnings is every time before you want to push your information to first to get and retrieve the last version from the local repository. So every time you are going, every time you want to push some data, you can first pull some data. And now we will see some example about that. And there is where we come to GitHub. So now I will also show you another way of starting um, a repository and then um, So I will go to my GitHub. Um, so if you created an account and you were able to play a bit, that's my GitHub. I have like 18 repositories and I can create a new one from here. So let's, I will just create first a new repository. So um, I will say, for example, um, uh, um, let's say it with um, our studio and it says um, that this name is available. I have no repo on my on my account that is called the same. And then I can add a description and this is the test repo um, for the meter. And then here um, you can actually GitHub allows you to have public or private repositories on the free version. Usually if there is nothing that you don't want to show or that is like some work from, for a publication that you don't want to show or something, it's good if it is public. Usually people can see it and could also like collaborate with you. Um, and then I, you can add a readme, and this will be already a file that will have a description of, of what your repository is about. And then I just create this repo. So now I have my repository. The, the thing is, okay, how do I connect R to R and R Studio with this online repository that only has like this markdown file I created here? So actually, um, if I go here to code. I have here the link of my repository and I have to copy this. So it's already copied. And then I go to R Studio, and now I will create um, a new a new project. Um, I don't want to say this. And this is another way of, of starting like a, a repo with version control. And I will say directly here, not just a new directory or a new project and a new directory, I want to start a project that has version control. And here I have to see, see okay, to choose which software I will use for version control and we will use R. And here it already asks you, okay, which is the repository you want to use. And here is where I'm pasting the link of the repository I created on GitHub. Um, Usually the first time, and I will just say create project, so it will have the same name. Um, and now I have a new, um, yeah, I have a new project. Um, yeah, usually when you do this for the first time, you will probably be asked to enter your GitHub um, username and your GitHub password. It is not doing that for me because I already use it, so it's already saved on my workspace. But if you do it for the first time, you will have to say which is your GitHub username and which is your GitHub um, password. So here we have this, for example, we have this readme file. And here is where we can, for example, um, start working remotely. Um, for example, here we can say, okay, Git with our studio, but we don't want this. Um, with name, maybe we want to say, uh, okay, this is an R latest chapter. Um, and then this is um, where we write info about the chapter. Um, and here we already have this git. Um, and then I, when I save this again, the readme appears, see that now it, it is it already appears as modified. We don't have to to run this uh, git uh, git add because 
since we already downloaded, it's already being tracked. But what we can do is just to, to push it. We will first pull just to know, be sure that we are already up to date. That's like the good practice. And then we can just commit and we'll say, um, for example, we are changing the title. And then I will commit. And so far, it's again everything on our, it's everything on my computer. So if I go here to, again, to my GitHub, nothing has changed. Um, so not, nothing has changed. Uh, it's the old name with the old description. But then if things are working good and I just push um, my last commit, So I'm just saving this information onto GitHub and I reload the page. So now I have what I changed on RStudio, I can see it on GitHub. And now I'm, all the changes I'm doing are already, are already connected to GitHub and um, I can save my changes also on the remote repository. The question is now, okay, but how do we collaborate? Because now it's just a repo on my own, um, on my own GitHub account. And to do that, you actually, and that's where I'm just um, going to show you one way of collaborating. That is the one that is also on the, that is also on the, um, on the slides, which is actually having the uh, collaborating on the same repository. Uh, after that, I will talk up maybe shortly about other ways of collaborating, but um, I think that's the most straightforward way to collaborate. It allows you to track the changes, to work with many people, and it's also um, the easiest to understand uh, as well and to manage. Um, so I will go back to my GitHub and then what I will do is here on settings, I will go to manage access. Now it asks you for my password. I hope this is the password. Yeah. And then I can invite collaborators. Um, so I could invite, for example, DBI issues. So So here I, I should like um, yeah invite the pers the, 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 the person I I want to collaborate I I, I need to know the name of this person uh, I know who I can invite so I will invite this person which I know um, and I invite him to my repository so it's pending because he has to accept the invitation. Uh, but once he accepts the invitation, he has direct access to my, um, to only to this repository. He will not be able to change other repositories, but he will be able to push and pull directly from my repository. Otherwise, um, other people on GitHub will not be able to do that. They will not be able to change my repository because it's on my account and they will need my password and my username. Uh, this way, I allow people that are that do not have my password, are not locked with my account, to change only this repo. And also, they they yeah they will be doing the same as um, the, what we were seeing here. They will just um, pull to the, the the repo to their computer. They will work um, there remotely. They will they can yeah have many commits and then they will push again. Yeah. And then the good thing for about, um, yeah, the good thing about GitHub is that all the um, markdown files, for example, I will go again to my repository. All the, mark, the, the, the markdown files can be already, are already displayed as, as with, with the, um, um, they are already displayed like with all the format that should have. Um, so actually using Markdown, which is actually very similar to R Markdown, but will not run R code, we can create a lot of things. 
uh, and do different things. For example, um, I could say I could add an, Im an image to the um, to our um, to our web page. Now that is available here, and I could do that, for example, by um, using some. So actually, um, yeah, by using some HTML. Um, so like like this. Um, I will just say, okay, I want what is inside to be centered. And then I will just, um, one and I will just close this. So I, for example, this is just to center the image and there is not like, a, um, or at least, the, the thing is that now you have to be careful because there are some things that would work with our markdown that will not work on the way GitHub reads markdown files. So actually, this is not an R markdown file; it's just a markdown file. And the only difference, so the, the biggest difference is that R markdown runs our code, and markdown will not run that that code. So we'll display the code, but will not run that code. So I could, for example. I will add here a figure, just the um, same way we do with Markdown. Um, so you can ask questions if there is something I'm saying that is not clear, but um, for example, I will add, I will look for an image on my computer. So for example, I have one here on the test I was doing before, just to, uh, to be sure that this was working. So I will just copy this and go to the um, repo I just created and I can add it here. Um, my figure, yeah. And I will copy the name of this file. And I will go back to R Studio. So it was so the file was just um, figures and, and ladies. And the good thing is that um, R has a preview of, of the markdown. Let's see if this works. So now it's rendering. And I think didn't find it. Let's try this. So now it has a warning, but at least it's, run, it's running. Um, so actually I can try to um, push this to commit this change that is already, um, yeah, that is already uh, working on my GitHub. So this warning is because usually in the R version, you will need a title, but on GitHub, you don't need that. So this warning is something you can already ignore. So I just will again commit this. I will say add, add image and then commit. And then I can just push it. And I can also push like, I like will add the folder and another commit. So actually now it's starting to Track these changes, but I need that figure on GitHub. Um, and now I can push both changes. And then if I go to GitHub and things are working well here and I just upload the page. So now I see that I have the newest version. 
Um, so like this, actually, there are a lot of things you can do, like um, put different figures, description, titles, and also you can just, for example, have different um, sub sites inside. Um, and, and we can try to do that. For example, let's say um, that I want to have um, some different titles, like next events, and let's say also past events. And then let's say I have one past event that is, um, I don't know, that was like 2020. Uh, yeah, it was like, I don't know, in December last year. Um, and, um, and what I will want to do is I, I want to create a link that, so the idea that I have now is I want to create a link that every person when he or she clicks here, will be redirected to another markdown file that will also be on GitHub and that will be like a screen like this. And then the, I will just click on my on the link and the person will be able to um, go. So the person will be redirected to another markdown file that will display the information about, our, about that past event, maybe with plots or pictures or a description of what we did. Um, so actually what I will have to do is create a new markdown, um, create a new markdown file. So not an R markdown file, I just want a normal plain markdown file, which has to be someone somewhere here. And then let's say this is the event um, in 2020-12, and I will just I have to save it. I will save it also here. And I will just save, and I just will say this is a very nice event. And save it again. And so I have now two, I have now two things to commit. I have my new markdown and I have my the changes I did on my readme. So I can just fair, first again commit. Um, so changes on main with me, which will be actually like the main um, screen that you see. And then I can also commit um, my markdown here. Um, so add. So, I commit and then I just push both of them. So now if I go here and below, so now I have like next event, past event, and I have a link, but this link goes nowhere because actually I didn't put a link here. I just leave it, I just left it empty. Um, so how can I do that? So actually my other markdown is here and I can also see the content here. So I can also, I can just copy this link and go to my readme. And now I can also change here as if change things on GitHub, but I could also, that, that could be changes. That I'm, I'm working from the other side. I will change things here in GitHub and then I will try to get those changes to my R studio. And that will um, be behaving similarly as it would do if someone else changed that. Because I will have to take those, like to pull those changes to my own R. Um, my own R. So I will edit this and I will put here the link to the markdown file. And I will save changes. So here, for example, to commit, um, actually to change this, I need to do a commit. So I cannot change things without doing a screenshot. So here I will say, add link to event 2012. Um, and usually here you just commit to the main, the main branch. Um, I will talk a bit about different branches, but so I think that, um, Mm, straightforward way to work at the beginning is 
having a one branch. Branch means, okay, it's, it's where I'm tracking my changes. So it's only like one line that I, where I'm tracking changes and it's not something that is bifurcating. It's not that I have one version and the other has another version and the other another version and then at the end they go together. It's just one line with, screen, with screenshots of my, my file. So I commit the change. And now when I go here, I just have my event in 2020. Uh, and here I could have a description of the event, a picture or different things. And then I go back to my R studio and I want to get all those changes again back into my computer because now they are only on GitHub. I have here still the old version without the, um, the change. So I will just pull, I will close and now I have the, the new version on my directory as well. Um, yeah. And that's one way. So I think that's one way of create, of having a lot of information available for people. And if you want to share with people, you will just share, um, for example, this uh, the, the link here. So the GitHub of, I mean, it could be the um, the a, a, you you could have a user for our ladies. Belize, if you want, or a user for, yeah. I mean, you, you could have a, a user where you just have user and then um, the repo, and then you just share this this first page, and then you can just link to other things. Um, yeah, and, and this is also a way, I don't know, to share, for example, also the work you do. Um, I don't know, I, I have tried many times to like, share things I do. I usually, I'm not usually constant enough. Um, but for example, I have here on Tidy Tuesdays, I just have a readme with the plots I did. And then if people are interested on in one of these plots, they can go here and then they have the, the code and, they, and the plot um, of, of what I did. So the, the code, the R code is here. Um, yeah. So, um, so I want to go back to the presentation. Um, yeah, this is the only one. So yeah, <laughs> I can use this. Um. So we went through this. Okay, we went, we went through this demo also. And so um, one more thing about like working with Git. So uh, actually you have like um, to wrap up and understand a bit how it works. Uh, actually in, in a repository that in this case will be associated to an R, um, R um, project repository, you will have a lot of untracked files. When you add the file, you will so the staging area, you will, you will start tracking the changes to the file. Every time you do some change to the, um, every, so when you do a commit, it means that for the repository, you are on the last um, uh, state of that file. And when you edit that file, um, the file will appear as modified. And if you are already um, tracking changes, then on, on, on RStudio, this is done automatically, it's already staged, and then you will be on a um, either modified or staged um, situation until you commit again. Um, and then like about, so what are we using also to organize the ideas? So first we are using a software, which is a version control software. So in this case, we are using Git. This is like the, the symbol for Git on Windows and for Git on, on Linux. But this is just a version control software that we could use locally. And there are others like SVN, um, like the, the other one that R gives you an option to use. Then um, we are using an IDE to manage Git. We are not managing directly from the console. We could, um, we will just use the, the commands we learn. So Git, Git add, Git commit, Git push and Git pull. Um, and we are using RStudio. And there is another open um, 
uh, IDE to Git, which is actually GitHub des desktop. And it gives you some more flexibility if you start doing some com more complex projects. But um, at least I am, I, I, I think that for most of the things that have to do with having repositories online on GitHub, uh, RStudio is good enough. When you want to start doing some more complicated things like, um, I don't know, developing some uh, web app where maybe I am working on adding a feature like um, being able to look on a database and someone else is adding another feature that is, I don't know, maybe being able to associate a picture to something and like, like different features of an app, maybe you want to use something more complex and, may, and, and maybe GitHub desktop is a bit more flexible there. And then remote repositories, GitHub is the one that is mostly used, but GitLab is also um, a, a good option and it's also like widely used. So I think I, I, I don't know, I went fast. Um, so actually I did the demo two and three together like that were like doing this small web page. And so, so here there are other resources that um, you can use. Um, so actually this Happy with, with R is one, it's a book um, where there are like mm, many of the things I showed you, but also some other things like how to register the a GitHub account, how to install Git, um, also, well, creating projects or using directly existing projects. Um, yeah, uh, all the different, some different Git commands we, we already saw. Something about branches, so let's see, this has some nice, uh, I can show you. Um, so yeah, since we have time. Um, so so far I was working with one branch. So we are all, we are doing um, everything like on one line. But for example, if I go to some other projects where many people are collabor collaborating, for example, here, um, I can go to insights. This is how to see how it's going and like to see networks and here, there is no only one line. So this, this will be a branch and this would be another branch. So someone else doing something at another point, right? And this will be another branch here. And at some point there is one person in charge of the main branch and will accept changes from other branches. And what, what is happening here is that actually not everyone is working on the same repo. So the, this repo, which is the main repo, I don't have access to this. So I have to do something that is called fork. So I just fork the repo, fork a repo from someone else. And that is something I could do um, from anyone actually. Let's do that. I will, um, I will um, on GitHub. So let's go to my, let's go back. I just want to find someone and fork his repo. So I will go here. Mm. I will go here, for example, and I would say, for example, I don't know, wow, he's, um, I don't know, he's working on something very interesting. So I want to have this repo on my GitHub account because I don't, maybe I don't know this person or maybe this person doesn't want me to do changes directly on, the, on that um, repository. So actually what I could do here, um, is to fork the repository. That means I will create a copy of the repository of this person on my own GitHub account. So if I actually uh, fork, I will say I will fork on my own account. Mm. And now I have everything he has, but now it's on my own um, repository, right? And then I can, just as I did before, I can copy this link and create a new project, for example, in RStudio using um, version control and using this repo as a cloud repository. So, um, yeah. 
So I will create a new project now. Some version control using Git. I will put this. And the important thing is that this is on my on my uh, GitHub account because I just created like a copy of this person into my own GitHub and I create the project. And once I create the project, so it will start. Um, and so now I have here like all the different changes. Um, and then you can also do this pull and so um, so as you, so now this person so let's go to insights again. So actually now I have like a, my own branch of this repository. Um, this branch is on my own. I could ask. I could just do some change here, for example, um, on this HTML web page. I'm opening it on R Studio as an editor, and I will just change something here. Um, so I will, I, maybe I want to translate this, which is in Spanish, and this is some of my favorite, favorite things. And I can save this, and I can again um, commit here. So and this is our first translation. And then I will push this. So this should appear now on my GitHub when it's finished. Um, so I will go into my repositories on this. And then if I go to the HTML, um, so now it appears in English. So this is a change I already did, right? Some of my favorite films. And let's say I want to suggest this person, okay, you should, um, you should change it. You should put it in English. So I go and I try to do a pull request. So I'm asking, so I'm trying to, I'm asking him to accept my change. So actually this is, this means me. I did, I, this is me. So I'm Ichisa unit two, and this is the person. Um, but now if I create a pull request, it's not like, as I told you before, that every everyone will be able to change the repository as I told you before, but in this case, I will create a pull request and I said as first translation. So um, this is the first translation. I just will create a pull request here. And it says, okay, this is it is able to merge. So on the two branches that we have, so the two versions of the repository are able to merge, but they will not appear on his repository until he has accepted the changes. Um, yeah. So I think it took some, uh, yeah, I went a bit fast maybe, but I think I, I, this is like at least what I wanted to show you. So like some basic uh, basics are about working with Git, connecting to GitHub and uh, one possibility to also to, to do um, web pages. I think that's the easiest one. Um, so this is actually a nice course that is online on Coursera um, to learn more about Git, and this will teach you a lot about like working, for example, with different branches and working from the console. And the, there is the option of like aud auditing the course for free. So actually, it's you have the possibility to attend the course for free without getting a certificate. Uh, but still, I think uh, it's. It's a nice course to understand what is this about forking repositories, working with branches, which is sometimes, at least for me, not so straightforward to understand. And then there is another possibility to do uh, websites with GitHub, which is using GitHub pages. And here there is like some small explanation about doing that. 
And actually, one way of doing this um, is just like by creating some, if I find it. But um, there, there is, I could also add it, I am going to say, say um, send you the presentation. I, I will add also um, the, the, the link to creating also web pages with R. That is like, an, it, it will be another meetup, like how to create a web page with R, but creating a web page, if you do it, then you could already upload it to um, directly to pages.github and then you will have also like a website um, that has some more flexibility, like the options of have tabs instead of only links, as I showed you before, um, host it on GitHub directly. Um, yeah. And so, for example, you don't need to, have to use Netlify. I mean, it will be also like a web page that you are not maybe changing all the time, like a blog, but still, if you want like a page that um, has some information and that can be maybe updated um, frequently, for example, with new meetups or something, or you want to have some information, it's also a good way to do it. Um, yeah. So I think that's what I wanted to tell you today. Um, Thank you very much. It, it has been very, uh, very thorough overview of, of GitHub and, and Git and how to connect it to our studio. So. Uh, so I think it's very useful, especially if you if you're just uh, starting or or haven't done it before um, for for a while. So uh, so we have some uh, time uh, left to to ask some questions um, for anything related uh, to to the topic today or or anything else. Um, uh, perhaps there's uh, one uh, one uh, question already from Ines that I can start with. Uh, so she posted in the chat um, first thanking you for the presentation and she's wondering how did you create these beautiful slides uh, in, in our studio or did you transform them into an HTML file? So that is actually easy. <laughs> um, so I will now close the project here because it has these strange things. And actually, it's just um, there are many ways to create presentations using R. That's, that are also other meetups. Uh, but the easiest way, also not the most flexible one, but at least the easiest one, is just to create our presentations. So, um, here, I always take some. So, it's, uh, I'm not sharing the screen. I'm just showing you, but then. Yeah, at it. the moment, no. No, so I will. Now it's working. Um, yeah. So um, I will go to file, new file, and then new our presentation here. And I have to save it somewhere. Um, let's say our ladies. Um, just um, new presentation. And this, it will restart. So this is actually the, the, the presentation, and it comes like like Mar, like our markdown comes with uh, comes with like um, yeah some some small presentation that you can already have a look at, and then you can just preview it, and then here you can just um, save as web page, and then you save it an HTML when you save it as a web page. Um, and then I could go and try to find that. And this, and that was an HTML, which is this one here. Uh, and the, there you have already, like this is the um, the one that comes with with our studio. And actually. Uh, so it's quite easy because I mean it works with Markdown with the difference that each time you add one of these lines, you are just adding a new presentation, like first slide, and then I could just say second and this empty. And then if I preview here, 
Um, so I have my first live, which is actually, so I just read it here. And then I just have like, okay, this is like the main slide, the first slide, then the one I just created using this um, line here, and then just the second slide. So it's really, really easy. It's not uh, so flexible. You have to use, sometimes you have to use a bit of HTML um, if you want, for example, the figures to be in the middle or things like that, but it's still very nice. And another way if, of, of doing presentations, which is also, I think more flexible and you have more more options like for example adding figures in the background or or pictures in the background is um I think it's a file our markdown and then here from template and then here Ninja presentation, and this is also a very nice way of doing presentations with R. It's a bit more complex. Um, so here, actually, you see that it's already more complex. You have a YAML that's in R Markdown, and it has some some characteristics in R Markdown. Um, here also, the, the 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 slides are demarked by these three um, yeah three little lines um, three scores. And then you can also, I guess if I run it, I could also see. Ah, no, this you got, you have to print it directly as an R markdown. Um, let's see. So it takes some time to commit. But this, yeah, this is creating also the file. And this is another way of doing presentations. Which... Yeah, so actually, this is uh, using the Xeringen um, template. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is just a sharing and template, but all this sharing and package allows you to do presentations um, that are more flexible, like adding pictures at the bottom and things. Yeah, yeah. this is very nice. There's also one, uh, I think someone created the sharing and um, presentation template using the purple color for our ladies. Uh, <laughs> Uh, theme, so so that is also uh, an option to use. Yeah. So, uh, any other questions? Um, anything related to what Elisa talked about, or anything else? Maybe someone has some problems with GitHub, or so I was. Well, maybe Oh, sorry, I just interrupted you. No, I was just going to ask uh, something about um, maybe about the figures. Um, I just remembered uh, you you put them in um, uh, in in a in a separate file um, like this one figure. But but if you have uh, only one figure, can it also be not in this folder? Will it be um, the same on on GitHub and? Or how, do, how will it work? So actually, the free, so the, you also have to upload the figure on GitHub because it will not be. So GitHub actually um, does have access all the time to your computer. It only has access when you just push or pull. Um, so if you want to have a web page that anyone can see from anywhere, you need to have everything you need already on, on the repository. And that's why I just also clicked on this on this feed, on this uh, folder and uploaded it as well. Um, I can again maybe to make it clear, share my screen. So for example, when I was um, in the repository created here. So actually here you will you will have the folder. Um, so that's like the part where GitHub does not really work 100% as a web page. But then you can also see, you can also like on this README, so this is like the main 
page of the repository. Here on the readme, you could also just find this is the web page of um, our ladies to Belize, and then directly put the link to the web page. And then you could just use this as, as a main, for example, as a main web page. The only thing is that now, like the link is a bit longer than when you are just here. Uh, but the thing is that this is like the, yeah, this is the main repo. So in the main repo, you have everything. And the readme file is the one that is displayed. This one, this other file that is also markdown is not displayed. So you need a link to the, to this, specific file to display um, and but yes everything that so actually if I click on the picture it takes me to the um, to the folder and to the file like it was happening with the other like what it was happening with this link but everything that you want to have um, should be online otherwise there is no access to your yeah to your computer because it have it's like it's not that your computer is like the server of your web page. It's just send you just upload information and then GitHub is the server of your web page, something like that. Okay, thank you. So there, uh, Nasreen is asking uh, about accessing the the re recording. So it will be uploaded, uh, I think, at the Our Ladies Global YouTube channel. Um, and, and I will send uh, the link to everyone who uh, registered um, either on, on our meetup page or on, uh, on our registration form. So, um, that's okay, uh, of course, uh, okay uh, with uh, everyone. And then I can also like send the last or yeah last version of the presentation. Um, um, yes, and once uh, once Elisa has sent the last uh, version of the presentation, then I will also share the link uh, together with the video link. But this uh, I now put in the chat the Our Ladies Global YouTube channel. Uh, it has a lot of videos already, so you can actually check uh, what else they have. But uh, but this is where where also today's uh, session will be. And yeah, thank you indeed for the very thorough presentation today. Um, unless there are some questions, uh, then we can start to wrap up. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that, yeah, it, it's a topic that needs uh, sort of hands-on. We need to uh, practice and then, then uh, all the questions and solutions will appear. <laughs> But, uh, but thank you very much uh, for your talk and for the presentation. It was really very informative. Thank you for the invitation. And at least um, my own experience was starting to work with, uh, with these things, like really without any explanation and getting like a lot of confusion. What is patch? What is poll? What is commit? What is, I don't know. And, and I think that at least going through kind of a clarification of these concepts and things um, also helps at the end. Um, yeah. At least when I finally regret about this, it was like, oh, this is what it was all about. Um, so that's been. Yeah, it definitely takes some time to orient around the terminology, but uh, but I think uh, it's it's uh, you gave us a very good uh, basis for for the beginning steps. So thank you very much. <laughs> and just like my question, so maybe. Well, I, I just, I'm, I'm curious about who you already work with Git and GitHub. Um, yes. Um, so just say on the chat yes or thumbs up or th something. Yeah, maybe you can indicate. Um, so we have a few people, couple. <laughs> I think uh, uh, it's just in general with GitHub or uh, with the relation to our studio. I don't know, uh, just in general with GitHub. Mm. Yeah. So I just, uh, I'm just sometimes using some GitHub resources, but I don't know, I don't have my own. So I really want to create something. It's a little bit early maybe. Yes, so uh, it would be really good. Yes, I needed this <laughs> training and I am looking forward for the link because I need to, um, 
I need to uh, have a look again for go through everything again. I mean, for example, if you are using things that are on GitHub, then this forking a directory from somewhere else to your own GitHub account might be useful. Uh, um, you mean, uh, uh, can you say again, sorry? What do you mean? That you, this possibility to copy what someone did on its own GitHub account to your own GitHub account. Is it possible? And I mean, is it okay? <laughs> I mean, if, it, if the repositories are public, it means that people are okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you 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 would put your repository as a private repository. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And I think that also Elisa showed uh, it when, when you were creating a uh, first repo, um, you can also indicate uh, the license that, uh, that your repository mm -hmm. is adhered to. So, so if it's, um, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what it said, but, but basically um, it, it um, sort of defines the, like the usage of this material more in more, with more detail. Uh, but basically this is sort of like open source uh, collaborative uh, use uh, if, you, if you put it on GitHub, I think in general. And of course, if you use any material, it is always a good practice to refer to the original source. Uh, so, so that should be anyway used, yeah. And also, I mean, what, there, what happens with GitHub also is that people start collaborating that you don't know. For example, with some, I don't know, I was collaborating with some um, translations to Spanish and then someone started to translate. It's something I don't know, but he just did a copy of the repository and started asking to like accept the changes he was doing, which was actually translating something. And so there is like, you start having collaboration with people you actually don't know, don't know where they come from, um, never talk to. Uh, that's, that's interesting also. And that is by GitHub. Probably the topics are you or you, your work you put on GitHub and allow everyone to access them. It's probably just uh, the topics you are working uh, with just your interest and not like uh, with work related or something more uh, official. Probably uh, it's like this, uh, I think. Yeah, because everyone has access to the uh, files and to the uh, work you're doing with some uh, official collaboration or something like this. Yes, but also, for example, when developing R packages, many people put their packages on R and some people start suggesting changes, for example, adding um, some new book, I don't know, some new feature to how to do a plot or things like that. And, these collaborations happen, and that's why many people also um, host they, they they work they work open because also, for example, for our packages, maybe there is something that does not work, and then someone there's also a possibility to open an issue on GitHub and say, okay, I'm having this problem, and this does not work, and this issue is going to the person that has this repository and that is developing this R package, and he's saying, okay, this person has this problem. Um, and yeah, so it's not like, usually it's of course not things that, it's usually things that are supposed to be to share with others, right? It's, you are not on one side. On the other side, when you just publish your results and you want people to have access to what you did and maybe start from your code to develop something else, you can also post it on GitHub and the person can make a copy to start working from where you left. Uh, for example, and that's also um, that also happens. I mean, there are more and more papers that have the code of the of the study online on GitHub, and people use it. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I think that GitHub is is indeed very good for doing this collaborative kind of projects, and um, and and also it helps with replicability. Like if you want to uh, show uh, what you have done exactly, then this is a good way how to share your codes, for example. Yes, definitely. Also, to show sometimes your own work, like. 
I don't know, uh, to show projects you want to just have online to show people that you're able to do things or that what you want to, uh, yeah, or, or you want people to know what you're able to do and then GitHub is a nice place to post that. So I don't know, I did this, I did this three plots for Tidy Tuesday and I have them there. So I show that I can do some data analysis and plots with, uh, with, um, with R and I can just share this repository with someone else to show that I can do that. Um, which is something I just never did constantly, but there are people that have very nice things online and, and you can always um, learn from the code that other posts. I know on Twitter, if you just uh, look for this hashtag tidy Tuesday, there are a lot of people making plots from data once a week and then you can just say, oh, this is a beautiful plot. How did he do that? And usually people share the, the code or many people share the code with a link on, on a GitHub repository. And that's also, yeah a nice way to use it, like to show what you can do. Yeah, finally, the only reason we are doing uh, all this is just to share to the public and other interested people, of course, sharing is the best practice, yeah. Yeah, so with this, uh positive sharing note, we can maybe finish uh, today's meetup. Uh, and thank you again for the talk. And thank you for everyone who participated. Uh, I think it was really useful. And uh, yeah, so I hope to see you somewhere <laughs> next time. Our, our own uh, meetups are then also in June, still we have two uh, book club meetups. Uh, so on the 20th of June and on the 27th of June, I hope that everyone who's interested will join. And um, and yeah, uh, I hope we will see Elisa, uh, you somewhere <laughs> in the yes. coming uh, months and years as well. And thank you again for the invitation. I was really honored to like have the possibility to bring the talk and sharing with you. So thank you. Mm -hmm.